All right, so we got a torsion problem. <clears throat> got a plate flat welded to some structure, uh, the cantilever load on it, acting to put this weld ABC into torsion. So we're going to see how to carry out a calculation like this. So in the process for this, we're going to have to calculate the centroid location, uh, figure out what the moment is, uh, and then uh, do some vector analysis to figure out the peak torsional stresses at the far extents, those being A, B, and C. The case we're using for the section properties is case 3 in Shigley. Uh, it's upside down from the, the actual problem, but it doesn't make a bit of difference. It's just a section property. So we got B as 100 in the problem, D is 150 millimeters, and the weld height is given here. This is an analysis problem. Uh, it's given as 12 millimeters, so we can calculate these uh, explicitly right now. We'll start with that. So just from the <clears throat> from table 9-2, we've got X squared, which comes out to be 20 millimeters. Set x squared, x bar, y bar, just the centroid locations. d squared divided by 2, b plus d. That's 45 millimeters. Let me go ahead and write those out on the figure so I've got them handy there. Cross sectional area here is given as dot 707 times h times 2b plus d. That comes out to be 2969 millimeters squared. Ju is given as b plus d to the fourth minus 6b squared d squared divided by 12 times b plus d. That gives 852,100 millimeters cubed. And then J is going to be, as before, dot 707 times H times JU. And that comes out to be 7.229 E to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. So those are all the section properties we need, and we can go ahead and calculate the, the offset moment for this as well. What we're going to do is transfer that 20 kilonewton load to the centroid location, which is going to carry the force directly over. And the moment is actually the distance from the edge of the plate to the load is given in the problem statement as 300 millimeters. And then we're coming back by x bar or 20 millimeters. So this actual offset distance here comes out to be 280 millimeters. That makes the moment at centroid location G equal to the force times that offset for a moment of 5.6 e to the 6 newton millimeters. And that's going to be, well, it's tough to fit it in at the, at the location, but it's going to be a clockwise moment there. All right, that's everything we need to start the actual shear calculations. Now, the direct shear is uh, as straightforward as it's ever been. We've got a shearing force of 20,000, cross-sectional area of 2969, which gives me a tau prime equal to 6.736 megapascals. And next we'll calculate the torsional shear. This is a little more involved. So what I'm going to do is just draw out the weld itself free from the rest of the geometry. Make it a little easier to track what I'm doing. 
and I know I'm going to have centroid location G. Right there. Uh, and I know the distances here as 20 and here as actually here as 45 millimeters. Now what I'm going to do is construct a position vector from that centroid location to every distal point. Uh, that being here <clears throat> at point B. Here at point A and all the way down to point C. I'm going to call those, they're, they're just position vectors, so I'm going to call them RA, RB, and RC. <clears throat> now, the direct shear we can go ahead and place on the diagram um, as is. It's going to be acting downward at each location. And it just has the magnitude as calculated directly above. Now the shear due to the torsion is, is going to vary location to location, but its direction is always going to be perpendicular to those position vectors. So as we go around, it's always in the same direction as far as clockwise, counterclockwise, and perpendicular to its respective radial position vector. Now for each of those we need to calculate the angles and this is just trigonometry um, you can go through this on your own time I'm just going to give the angles as I've uh, chosen to calculate them and we've got here what I'm going to call theta A comes out to be 29.36 degrees theta B I'm going to take off of the horizontal right here That's about 24.0 degrees. And theta C, which I'm also going to take off the horizontal here, uh, that's about 10.78 degrees. I also need to calculate the lengths of each of those position vectors and you can work through this and each one of them you know there's a right triangle defining it so you can just take some root sum squares to get these lengths uh, I've gone ahead and done that the length of A comes out to be 91.79 millimeters the length RB is 90 excuse me 49.24 and position vector RC is 106.9 millimeters. All right, with the position vector lengths, we can calculate the actual um, magnitude of tau A, tau B, and tau C. Uh, we don't actually need the angles yet for that. That'll come in in just a second. So tau A double prime is going to be equal to the moment times RA over J. So 5.6 E to the 6, 91.79, and 7.229 E to the 6 is J. That gives me 71 dot one one megapascals tau b is done in a similar way we just have rb instead of ra so same values here just changing the radius 
And out of this one, we get 38.14. And then tau double prime at C. It's going to be the moment times RC over J, which is 82.81. So that gives us those three magnitudes. So at each location, we have those respective values going in some direction, which are adding to the direct shear tau. So at this point, we've got to use the angles, do a little bit of vector addition to figure out what the true um, magnitude of shear is at each location. They're not perpendicular, so we can't do root sum square in this case. So I'm just going to do this location to location, and uh, there's nothing, nothing special about this. This is just some basic vector addition. So I want to calculate the x and y components. At A, we'll have the torsional shear stress times the sine of theta A, which is 34.86. In the y direction, we'll have the direct shear tau prime plus the cosine of theta a times tau a double prime which is 68.71 and to calculate tau a we're taking x component squared plus the y component squared rooted for a tau a value of 77.05 megapascals at location B, same basic thing. X here is going to be tau double prime B times the cosine of theta B, which is 34.84. The Y components will have tau prime minus tau double prime B sine theta B which is equal to a negative 8.777. Tau B, the magnitude here is again going to be the root sum square of those two values and we'll get 35.93. And the minus there is just if we look at those uh, two, uh, two vectors, they're going in opposite directions so they are going to be subtractive. Finally, at location C, what that was, at location C, we have tau double prime C times the cosine of theta C is equal to 81.53. In the y direction, we'll have tau prime minus tau double prime C sine theta C. That's equal to negative 8.75 for a magnitude at C of 82 megapascals. So those three numbers represent the true maximum shear stress at each location. And of course failure is going to be predicted wherever it's worst, worse, and that would be location C. So to uh, finally calculate a factor of safety based on this scenario will have NY is equal to the shear strength of the material divided by tau C. 199.1 divided by 82 gives us a factor of safety for this problem of 2.43.